Today I'm going to talk about Americana, the fifth studio album by American punk rock band The Offspring, released on November 17th, 1998 uh, through Columbia Records. Uh, the album was a major success, uh, debuting at number six on the U.S. Billboard 200 and selling over 198,000 copies in its first week. Uh, and in total, it sold over 10 million copies worldwide. Uh, this album spawned hit singles, uh, Pretty Fly for a White Guy, Why Don't You Get a Job, and The Kids Aren't All Right. It was uh, promoted with a worldwide tour, and uh, they even played Woodstock 99. The album features a variety of music styles, from the pop, punk, and skate punk of the singles to the uh, Latino-influenced uh, P- Pretty Fly for a White Guy, the psychedelic Pay the Man, uh, and the album is also a critique of American culture, touching on subjects like consumerism, racism, violence, uh, alienation, and the American dream. Uh, the album was recorded and mixed at El Dorado Recording Studio in Burbank, California from July to September 1998, with producer Dave Jordan, who also produced the previous album, Ixne and Ombre. The band experimented with different musical styles, such as uh, Latino, psychedelic, and progressive rock, but they still maintained their punk rock roots. According to Dexter Holland, America, Americana was a commentary on American culture, it was a satire of uh, a typical American political correctness. Uh, one of the influences was the Jerry Springer show. Uh, the band even considered naming the album after the show's the news tickers, such as uh, Stripper Wars. Uh, Holland was also inspired by people living in Huntington Beach. Uh, as I was doing my research, I actually learned a new word, and I'm not sure if I'm allowed to say it, so uh, here it is on the screen. Rigor. A Caucasian person, typically young and male, who dresses, speaks, or otherwise behaves in a manner that is stereotypically associated with certain aspects of African American, Caribbean, or hip hop culture. So basically, uh, that word is uh, the inspiration for uh, the song uh, Pretty Fly for a White Guy. I thought it was interesting. Uh, you always learn something new when you uh, watch my videos. So let's uh, talk about the songs. First song is a nine-second intro called Welcome, but after that, there are 12 more songs. Uh, Have You Ever is a fast-paced punk rock song. It appeals to the socially awkward. It poses the question, have you ever, ever been in one of these situations? And it's a way to make someone feel like they're not alone. Uh, this band always did that well. Staring at the Sun, another energetic song with fast rhythms. Uh, the lyrics were not easy to interpret, but I read one comment saying it was like trying to find peace in a dark world. Uh, these songs appear, appeal to uh, different people in different ways. Now let's talk about the first single, Pretty Fly for a White Guy. The song uh, was big. It peaked at uh, number 53 on the U.S. Billboard Hot 100, uh, number 5 on the Billboard Mainstream Rock Track Charts, and number 3 on the Billboard Modern Rock Track Chart. Uh, it was uh, successful internationally, reaching number 1 in 10 countries, and including uh, Australia, it actually stayed there for uh, number one for six weeks. It was a certified quadruple platinum. They did a parody of this um, by a Weird Al Yankovic did a song called uh, Pretty Fly for a Rabbi. Oy vey, oy vey. And all the goyim say I'm pretty fly for a rabbi. So the song, uh, they begin with a pseudo-German nonsense phrase, uh, Gunter Glitting Lauching Lubin. Uh, that was taken from the Def Leppard's 1983 song, Rock of Ages. And there's one part in the chorus, the Give It To Me Baby part. It was uh, done by this voice actress whose name is uh, Nika Futterman. The music video is pretty cool. It shows the white guy driving uh, through town in his low rider, trying to act cool in front of uh, African Americans. Uh, hence that word I just showed you right before. Uh, the, the band actually wanted Seth Green to play the white guy, but uh, he was unavailable. So um, it's a really great song. Then the other single, uh, The Kids Aren't All Right, that's the third single. Uh, this was a top 10 hit on the U.S. Modern Rock Tracks chart. Uh, the song was played at the end credits of uh, Woodstock 99, Peace, Love, and Rage uh, documentary. And it was uh, the opening scene of The Faculty. And it appears on the soundtrack. The song's title was inspired by the Who song, uh, The Kids Are All Right, from my generation. Uh, and the song lyrics uh, tell stories of several people from the town and the problems they faced 
growing up, such as unplanned pregnancy, unemployment, drug addiction, and suicide. Was that based on the real experiences of uh, Dexter Holland? Then this is some feelings. It's actually a cover song. You might not know it if you're like a younger person, but uh, the original song was the soft rock radio hit by a Morris Albert uh, from 1975. It kind of goes like this. Uh, feelings, nothing more than feelings. Trying to forget my feelings of love. Okay, let me continue. Uh, this uh, song doesn't sound anything like that. It's an energetic punk rock song. Uh, it's okay. Maybe one of the weaker songs. I kind of found it to be cheesy, but it's still, it's okay. Now uh, let's talk about She's Got Issues, uh, one of my favorites. Uh, Me really kind of similar to the song Self Esteem from Smash. Uh, this is one from the point of the girl being the one with a problem in the relationship. It was a very catchy song, maybe my favorite from the album. Uh, the video was directed by Jonathan Dayton and Valerie Farris. Uh, animation by Wayne White. And this depicts a usual work of a young woman and she was played by Zoe Deschanel who was pretty much unknown at the time. Um, basically things in her everyday life uh, she found like disturbing or annoying and they were enhanced by these cartoons. They take place in her mind. Uh, because it's one of my favorite places to meet new people. This song's called Walla Walla. Next is Walla Walla. It's a cool song. It's about a person who has con committed many crimes but has always gotten away with it. Uh, his life eventually catches up with him and he get, and ends up getting sentenced to a long prison sentence. Uh, song is making fun of him. Uh, I imagine it's about a real person. The End of the Line is a fast punk rock song. It's very heartfelt. It's about reminiscing about a friend who has died. The band has had a few songs like this one. I like the psychedelic rock style breakdown in this one as well. No Breaks is an old school fast punk rock song. Uh, I tried to interpret the lyrics. I wasn't really sure. I read a few comments saying that it was about an old video game called Crazy Taxi 2, but I'm not really sure, so I can't confirm that. Now another uh, great song, Why Don't You Get a Job, another uh, single. He says, man, I really gotta lose my check in the this was uh, basically taken from the Beatles, uh, Oh Bloody, Oh Blada. They changed the lyrics. People say they ripped it off, but uh, according to the lawyer, he said that, like, quote, other than speculation, no one's made or threatened a claim on the matter. So it's pretty much they took the rhythm. That's basically it. It's a fun song, uh, like people who don't like to work and live off of other people. It was a second single, peaked within the top 10 of the charts in many countries, including uh, number two in the UK, Australia, Iceland, and Sweden. Music video, several cameos, such as Bob Eubanks. Uh, he hosts this parody dating show and uh, another cameo from Pussycat Dolls member, Carmen Bachar. Then there's the title track. It has some cool uh, you know, slow parts. It plays guitar riffs in the first part of the song and it was uh, almost like doom metal but the song is about life in the United States. Mentions uh, cable, uh, fast food, shopping malls. Another, another great song I like listening to. Pay the Man is the last song. It was very different. It's an eight minute long song. Had some slow tempos. Middle Eastern guitar riffs. The vocals were very psychedelic and it was a weird song. It didn't sound like punk rock. It sounded more like early Pink Floyd. It was pretty cool. The last song on the album, not counting the reprise of Pretty Fly for a White Guy. Uh, for my final thoughts, this is definitely my uh, favorite album by the band. I like it more than Smash. Um, I had this on a cassette when it came out. So back then I was working in this factory. I had a cassette Walkman. We were able to listen to music uh, at work uh, while we had headphones. And back then we didn't have MP3 players or we didn't have cell phones. So we listened to music on cassette or maybe just the radio. So... Uh, for that reason, I had this on repeat back in the day, and I really like it a lot. So that is all. Let me know in the comments what you thought of this album. Uh, check out my ranking of the Offspring albums right here. Please like this video. It helps me with the YouTube algorithm. Uh, please subscribe if you have not already. I will uh, see you in the next one.